Imagine the 214 armor to a better mobility, armor, and firepower, but it came 40 years earlier. Well, that's kind of what the Object 299 is. In the mid 1980s, the JCS Design Bureau started work on the Object 299, which was expected to come into service at some point in the late 90s. The tank would weigh 50 tons, would be powered by a GTD 1500 gas turbine engine mounted in the front, which would result in a horsepower per ton ratio of 30, which is identical to that of the AMX 10RC. It would have a top speed of 80 km per hour on paved roads and 60 on dirt roads, with a range of 510 km. There were also plans to mount engines with power beyond 1800 horsepower. The armor layout of the tank was broken into three main sections. The beak at the front of the tank would serve as the first layer of protection, with 300mm of composite thickness at a thickest point, along with ERA protection. Next was the engine and transmission compartments of 1700mm thickness. While it is unlikely to provide serious protection against modern rounds, it may decrease the energy of the round and destabilize it. The final layer of protection was the crew capsule, with 250mm of composite armor protection from the front. The rear of the crew capsule was reinforced to a standard ammunition cook-off, and a hatch was added for autoload and maintenance. In total, the front would have over 1100mm of protection against APFSDS and 1400mm against heat projectiles. This would make it immune to modern APFSDS and heat projectiles. From the side, the crew compartment was protected by a dual layer of ERA mounted in a 130mm cast base. Other areas of the side of the hull would have fuel stored in protective containers. The Arena Active Protection System was also mounted in the tank, which would serve as the first layer of protection. Naturally, as any tank for its time, it was also fitted with MBC protection and spore liner. The top would have 300mm of effect protection, which would be sufficient to defeat early top-down attack munitions, but modern ones would be able to penetrate. However, recent iterations of the arena, as seen in this video, uh, can defeat top-down attack munitions such as the Javelin, though the success rate of these systems is unknown. The Object 299 would have two crew members, which was uncommon for the time, but issues of command would lead to proposals for designs with three crew members. A swiveling thermal camera would also be mounted, which would have put it on power with Western main battle tanks by the time it had entered service in the mid 90s. However, Soviet images available at the time, like the Agava 2, were behind in quality, so it would still lack in that aspect. The cannon chosen was the powerful 152mm 2A3 gun. The rotating carousel autoloader also had two rings, one inner and one outer, which together would be able to carry 40 rounds. At the time, two rounds of the 2A3 gun were being developed, the Griffel 1 and the Griffel 2. The Griffel 1 was a 7.1kg uranium alloy penetrator, which had an exit velocity of 1850m per second. It was able to penetrate 520mm of RHA at 60 degrees. The Griffel 2 was an 8kg tungsten penetrator, which would have had a slightly lower exit velocity of 1750m per second and it could penetrate between 420 and 450 millimeters of RHA at an angle of 60 degrees. This would have been a much needed upgrade in capabilities, as rounds such as the 3BM42 and 32 were becoming dangerously outdated against western tanks like the M1 Abrams. Here in the table we can see that at a 2 km range, the 3BM42 round only had a 9% chance to deal damage to an M1A1 Abrams. The autoloader compartment also had a rear door for reloading and maintenance purposes. There were also proposals to develop the Object 299 into a universal combat platform. These included designs for missile carrier, an IFV, SPG, and various proposals for disaster management. One of these IFV variants would have a 30mm cannon, a 12.7mm machine gun, and a 30mm grenade launcher with 12 passenger capacity. Another IFV would have a larger caliber cannon and the top ATGM, and it actually looks very similar to T-15. The missile carrier version was also proposed with vertical launch missiles, however this kind of technology is just as far away today as it was then, and making this super expensive hull into an SPG or recovery vehicle seems fairly redundant, as a T-55 or a T-72 hull is able to fulfill such function at a fraction of a cost. After the collapse of the USSR, more of an emphasis was placed on the disaster recovery aspect. On March 11, 1991, the project was commissioned by the Russian MOD in cooperation with the Ministry of Emergency Situations. The engineering vehicle would be equipped with a dozer blade, a mechanical arm, and equipment for welding and pulling. 
It would have also had a remote control vehicle called the Complex 2P. The modular container section was also mounted to the back, which could have mounted firefighting, hazardous waste transfer, and decontamination tools. One hull was eventually manufactured and tested, but in 1996, funding had dried up and the project was abandoned. Today, the hull sits at a firing range.